Hey guys, Tim and Antonio here at Greensburg Tracker with Coyote. Today we are looking at the Coyote CS2220 Tracker, which is brand new okay. for Coyote this year. Now folks, we're going to go over the actual entire loader frame removal from the tracker itself. Again, this is the CS2220 Tracker with the SL2420 loader. First thing we're going to start is we're going to have Antonio go ahead and drop our kickstands. You do not have to have the loader raised up this high. It's just a little bit easier for, for you to reach everything without having to bend down. So we'll get the left-hand side of the loader. We'll go ahead and move right over. We're gonna drop the right-hand side kickstand down into place. Just remove a simple pin, lower that arm down, and return that pin to that lower position. Okay, now that we have the kickstands in the fully lowered position, we're gonna have Antonio go ahead and fire the tractor back up. And we're gonna start lowering the loader down onto the bucket and onto the kickstands. So he's gonna start lowering that loader down. I'll go ahead and get you a little lower so you can see everything make contact with the ground. So we still got a couple inches to go. The kickstands have just made contact. The bucket has made contact. Let's see if I can get you a little closer. What's important is we need that cutting edge more on the ground, so we don't want the back of the bucket touching the ground quite yet. So once we've done that, I'll slide you back onto the right hand rear of the loader framing, and we'll see this big silver hand. We're gonna go ahead and lift up on that, just as Antonio's gonna do, pull out, and then rotate it up in the upward position. Perfect, we'll go ahead and do that on the opposite side, and we're just taking it slow, showing you how it all moves. Perfect. So at that point, we have disconnected the loader from this bot, from this middle pin. We still have a cradle at the bottom. So now what Antonio's gonna do is he's gonna start lowering the back of the bucket to the ground. So as he does that, go ahead. You can see how we're lifting the loader frame. So just over there, it's lifting out of position. Now you can see we've separated from the cradle and the top pin. At this point, we are 100% disconnected with the front end loader. Our last and final step is going to be disconnecting the hydra hydraulic lines. All we do, and this is very important, make sure you turn the tractor off before we ever touch those hydraulic lines. Turn the machine off, just like Antonio's doing now. We're going to move that loader valve control in all four directions, including diagonals. This tractor is going to make over 2,000 pounds of force at those hydraulic lines. So you do have to be cautious. There are simple quick connect collar. So just like your garden hose at home, pull down on the collar, the line separates just as easy as that. Okay guys, at this point, we're gonna show you how to return the loader back onto the tractor. So we still have it in that disconnected position. You can see the loader pin is not in the cradle at the bottom and that heavy pin is not in the cradle on the loader frame itself. So Antonio, he's already just pulled forward while we were just talking about it. So he's gonna start repositioning that loader back into position. So what he's gonna do is start uh, lowering the, lo yep, lowering the loader. There you go. So lowering it into position. Now he's gonna roll that bucket just forward a little bit, again, to get that rear back off the ground, just as it was when we started taking the loader off. At this point, he can go and return those silver handles back into the lower position. Perfect. Antonio leaned forward just a little bit too much and got the seat safety to turn off, but he got back down quick enough. Boom, and you're back into position. At this point, the loader is fully reconnected. All we have left is lifting the loader back up and returning our kickstands to the storage position.